Hey friends and family, um, this is a day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Some days, um, those are the words I have to say um, to get through the day. Um, all of us recently, um, with the state of the world, uh, we just may be at being feel really heavy and a lot of things are coming against us. Uh, I don't know about you, but it seems like every time I turn around, I'm hearing um, either a, a marriage that's struggling or I'm hearing of someone um, passing away uh, with COVID, someone that's dealing with COVID. Um, I'm hearing the news um, about our military and the state of the world. Um, it is just rampant. Um, kids in trouble, um, those that are taking their lives, um, this last year has just been horrific. And many times in this last year, there will be times I wake up and I'm like, oh man, I just don't even know how I can have my quiet time today. And I will set out here and I'll say, this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Cause this is the day that the Lord has made for God is with me and he'll never leave me or forsake me because this is the day that the Lord has made and greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And this is the day that the Lord has made and I will fear not for my God is with me. And the word says with God, we have the victory. He will trample down the enemy. And this is the day that the Lord has made because Jesus says, I've given you the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and overcome all the powers of the enemy. And this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Those are some of the things that I would say to myself. And um, I've started thinking about the Word of God a lot. And um, God has asked me and, and laid on my heart to start sharing what it looks like to swing his sword. If any of you have been around and, and me at all, um, you know that my favorite um, scripture um, and my verse in is verses is in Ephesians six, and part of it is is because uh, as a young child, um, that is a verse, one of the verses, Ephesians six eleven, that I learned at a very young age, and Ephesians six eleven it says, "Put on the full armor of God so that you can withstand the wiles of the devil." And I can remember as a child, there was a child evangelist and his name was uh, Willard Grant. And he would come to our church and I can remember him coming and he would, he stood up there that year that he was, he was a, like a warrior and he had a sword and he had a shield and he taught us kids how to proclaim that word. And we would stand there and I didn't know what we were doing at the time, but we were standing there saying that scripture over and over for that whole week that he was there. I truly began, believe that that was the beginning of me becoming a warrior and learning to swing his sword. I didn't know it at that young age, but years later in my 20s, I, um, I asked my folks for a study Bible. I really wanted to dig in and hear from the Lord. And I can remember um, sitting outside, taking the word, and I can remember opening it up and, and reading, excuse me, reading Ephesians 6 11 and in the Amplified Bible it looks a little bit different than the King James and that's how we learned it but I remember as I read that word it was like this something rose up in me I mean it was that like that young kid again standing there with our shoulders back and we were saying this is you know we were saying put on the full armor of God so you can withstand the wiles of the devil and I can remember seeing that in my early 20s and I would say that and I was like this the Holy Spirit rose up in me and I didn't know it that day but what was happening that day was I was becoming a warrior and if you go on and you read into Ephesians 6 it talks about putting on the full armor of God and everything from the breastplate of righteousness to the belt of truth the shoes of peace and the helmet of salvation and the sword uh, taking up the shield of faith and then taking up the sword of the spirit. And then where it says that in um, Ephesians 17, it says, take up the helmet of salvation 
and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And so as I have been journey, journey, going through my journey, um, I've been thinking about what does it look like to take up the sword of the Spirit? I mean, okay, I'm going to be honest. There are times that I take this. This is my, my Bible that was given to me by my folks. And I take this and I will swing it because I'll start saying, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Or I'll say, for with God we have the victory, he will trample down the enemy. Or I'll say, like in Revelations 12, 11, they overcome him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. What I've been hearing lately is a lot of people are just defeated. A lot of people are feeling downcasted, um, hopeless. And I just want to start coming and sharing with you that there is hope. The scripture says, I look to the mountains, where, do, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I want to give you and encourage you with hope. First of all, the hope that there's hope in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ loves us so much. I mean, he's laid down his life on that cross and took our punishment that we so deserved. And if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you are saved from the penalty of sin, which is death, it says in, in Romans. So first and foremost, I just want to encourage you, if you are my friends and family, if you're coming on and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that's the first and most important thing that we need to settle. In this world, we will have trials and tribulations. But if you know Jesus Christ, even when the world seems like it is chaos and it is it's trumbling and it's falling apart, our help, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, comes from the Lord God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. He will not leave us or forsake us, the scripture says. So this summer, as my church has been studying about David, one of the last sermons was about the mighty men of David. And one of those men, it was in 2 Samuel, one of those men that talked about that he was fighting and he was a warrior. And it said that the sword as he fought became frozen to his hand. That verse, I'd never seen it before. And if I had read it, and I know I'd read it, but it didn't resonate with me. But ever since then, I've been thinking about what does it look like if the sword would be frozen to my hand? And when I think about the sword, I think about the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And thinking about Ephesians. And thinking about that we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but about principalities. But we need to be warriors. And so I want to start coming on. And the Lord has asked me to do this um, starting last January. It's been on my heart. And I've just, I know I've been disobedient by not getting it done. And so here it is. I'm starting um, a YouTube video. Um, YouTube channel, a little scared, but I'm starting it because the Lord's saying people need to know how you swing your sword and also to encourage people that they need to swing their sword. And part of swinging the sword is proclaiming the word of God because the sword of the spirit is the word of God is what it says in Ephesians 6. So I want to read to you some of the, the scriptures today that talks about the word of God. It says, Proverbs 4, 20, 23. My son, play a co close, close attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. Right there it says, listen closely. And I, I'm saying we need to listen closely to the word of God. Then it also says, in Psalms 119, 89, it says, forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven, standing firm and unchangeable. That's the Amplified Version, Psalms 119, 89. Then it also says in Psalms 111, 7 and 8, it says, All God accomplishes is flawless, faithful, and, and fair, and his every word proves trust, trustworthy and true. They are steadfast forever and ever, formed from truth and righteousness. Let me talk about that again. It says, all God accomplishes is flawless. So everything that God has ever accomplished is flawless. And everything that he's going to accomplish is flawless. 
He's faithful and fair. And his very every word proves trustworthy and truth. So you know what that tells us? That every word in the word of God, whether you're dealing with a sickness, whether you're dealing with fear, whether you're dealing with anxiety, whether you're dealing with a marriage that's falling apart, whether you're dealing with just who you are in Christ, whether we're dealing with the, the, the craziness of this world, if you look in the scripture, whether you're looking for scripture on fear, there's going to be an answer and it is trustworthy and true. Then it says in Hebrews 4, 12, it says, for the word of God is living and active and sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soil and soul and spirit and joint and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. Again, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. So I really want to leave you with today is that first and foremost, like I said, if you know Jesus Christ, oh, what a journey I want to go on with you to come alongside you, encourage you to start swinging his sword. If you don't know Christ and you don't know what that means, if you don't know about the forgiveness of sin through Jesus Christ, that is my prayer. My prayer is that you would know, that you would know, that you know, that Jesus, he died on the cross and he rose again three days later. And the scripture says that those that believe on him shall be saved. So I hope this has meant something to you. And um, I just pray that as the Lord leads me, um, we will, uh, both, all of us, will, we will attack and we will, as it says, put on the full armor of God so that we can st take a stand against the devil's schemes. And what are we going to take a stand with and what are we going to use as our weapon? It's going to be the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God blessings. I pray that you will just walk in abundance today, but most importantly, you will walk with Jesus and you will take the word and it will become alive and active because as it says, is live and active and sharper than any double-edged swords.